Welcome back to another episode of One on One with Courtney Starks, and I thank you all for being here. If you are new to the show, I am your boy, Courtney Starks, and today we have the honor to have actress, singer, dancer, and content <laughs> creator, Kelsey Davies, joining us. Thank you so much for being here once again. I truly appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I have been really excited because there's so much that I want to talk about. Um, yep. And my, me and my publicist have been having this conversation because I'm like, when is, when is she coming on, right? When is she coming on? <laughs> and, uh, we were really excited about this one. So first and foremost, thank you. Secondly, how have you been? How has your summer been? Um, what's been going on? Yeah, it's been good. It's been really, really busy. I'm feeling a little bit burnt out, but like I'm trying to get it all together. You know, you kind of get <laughs> phases. It's just a lot. There's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely understand that. And I said, I said earlier that she's a content creator. She started, you started on YouTube and then yeah. transitioned over to TikTok. So for you, how was the transition and how did it contribute to your success? Yeah, the transition was, I mean, it was like kind of just a habit at first or not a habit, just a hobby, just like doing TikTok, you know, something yeah. for fun during COVID, which I think a lot of creators can relate to that. They all like kind of started during COVID because we were yeah. all stuck inside. Yeah. So we're all like, what do we do? You know, so I kind of started doing just TikToks and stuff like that. Nothing serious. And mm -hmm. then things started picking up and I was like, oh, okay, well, my TikTok could bring over people to YouTube, you know, because that was mm -hmm. my main focus. So then I started really building that up and it just, I mean, it's crazy. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I always have this conversation with creators it's like you, I'm a creator myself. And I think for all of us, 2020 was that moment where you either have it or you don't, right? And a lot right. of us kind of jumped into this creative bag, as I say, and we never left. If anything, we we found purpose in the quiet storm, right? So I say we found things that we love to do and we turned them into businesses. And yeah. that's just what we did. For you, did you find that um, even after this pandemic um, that you are kind of still searching for the purpose or did you find it? And now yeah. we're just expounding upon what else is next. Right. I feel like it, I don't know. I feel like I kind of found it, but then it's like, I always want to do more. Like I always yeah. feel like I want to do more. And once you do like uh, get all, all your stuff together, all your ducks in order um, with everything, I feel like you, your brain just like wants to do more, you know, mm -hmm. like nothing's ever, I don't know. I I feel like for me, nothing's ever enough, which yeah. sounds weird, but it's like just for my own personal self, like I'm so grateful for everything, but mm -hmm. it's like, I'm not, I'm not comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. I want to keep yeah. doing more, you know? And that's yeah. just like, that could be a good and a bad thing. I think. Mm -hmm. I guess depending on like where we are, right? Like people are yeah. always telling us, enjoy the moment. But sometimes when you're in that moment, it's like, Okay, time's up. What's yeah, next? yeah. Like, all right, next thing, let's go. But then it's like, I'm really, that's what I'm practicing too, even with meditation, yeah. just being in the moment and just and enjoying it. Living, you know, and yeah. that's something that's so hard because the hustle is real. I mean, you have to, you have to hustle. It's true because a lot of times you get caught in this thing of if I don't, then someone will come and top what I'm already doing or try to yeah. duplicate what I've worked so hard to do. You know? Right. And then in your brain, you're like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose this all? Is this all going to go away overnight? If I stop yeah. doing it, it's like your mind kind of just, it's hard. Plays these tricks. Yeah. 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 But well, we all know like with all of your paranormal content, your skits and your choreography, it's definitely landed you large, large followings on social media. So if you can, could you share some memorable experiences that you've had while creating the videos? Yeah, I've had some weird experiences, even like with my paranormal ones, me reenacting mm -hmm. them. I'll be in the middle of like being dressed up like these uh spirits. Yeah. And they'll walk in. And I it's just like a funny moment that I've had. A lot of people have asked about that and they will, but they don't really acknowledge it a lot. They'll just kind of yeah. look over 
and it'll just be funny, you know, because I'm just like mm -hmm. dressed up like them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of wanted to do a reenactment of me doing a reenactment of yes. them, but that I'm would be yeah. <laughs> so speaking about spirits, let's talk about Lola. Guys, I have been waiting for this. All right. Yeah. So everybody, Lola is this doll, right? I hate the word I hate to use the word haunted. But it's yeah. a spirit living in this doll. You, she's become real popular. Tell us a little bit about Lola and how did she become a recurring, basically a recurring star in your yeah. content? <laughs> yeah, so Lola, I got this haunted doll from eBay and there's a lot of people who collect haunted items. Yeah. And so I felt, I've always felt energy through photos. And right when I saw her picture, I just, I don't know. I had this weird feeling. I just bought her. I didn't even read into her why she was haunted. You oh know, my anything God. like that. I just had this energy. And then I found out later, you know, that she was born in 1901. She passed yeah. away in 19. She's a spirit of an 18 year old woman. Um, and she's pretty tall. She's like lengthy. She has curly hair, kind of like how my hair is now, mm -hmm. but a little more, a little more curly. Um, yeah. And she's in this white nightgown, which I, my boyfriend also has seen her in the same, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So then I started doing like the reenactments and just dressing up like her. Like I got this old nightgown that kind of looks similar to hers and people just really like it. I don't know. They yeah. just really, like the. it's like, I'm showing what I see, but mm -hmm. like, there's no other way to show it, honestly, because I don't yeah. know how you know, to show it visually <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it? I mean, for me, I would be, I would probably been creeped out. Doll would have been in the, in the trash, right? How yeah. was it when you, for your boyfriend, I too, yeah. when the doll started moving and doing things, like how was that first experience? I was scared. Like I was kind of freaked out because I was still coming in tune with my gifts. I didn't really understand them, you know? Oh. So I was just like, I was very nervous to see mm. what would happen, <laughs> but oh it was goodness. honestly, yeah, it was honestly like one of the best purchases I've ever made. Yeah. Um, like, just how, how would I have known how crazy it, it's gotten, you know, like I knew mm -hmm. I had a feeling that something was going to happen, yeah. but I didn't know the extent of it and it's just like it's she's helped build like a whole community yes. too of people you know like it's uh -huh. and people feel something with her there's something about her that people feel yeah. and that's something I like just got chills mm -hmm. I think that's something that even shows like this is yeah. this is something so real because like Especially anyone when it's genuine right yeah, anyone can post with a doll, you know, but like the fact that so many people have just like clinged on to Lola is mm -hmm. so interesting to me. It's cool. <laughs> you know, with a significant following on various social medias, you've built up, like I said before, you've built up so many people who are engaging. How do yes. you maintain a connection with those people, with your fans? It's so yeah, it's so important. I mean, some people get so caught up in the business side of things, but they mm -hmm. have to realize you're building a community. Yeah. And this community is is part of your business, but it's also like you wouldn't be where you are without them. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm like like every fan that comes up to me, it's just so memorable every single moment and yeah. I um, I spend hours a day responding to comments. I make sure to respond to as many as I can to make mm -hmm. sure that they feel acknowledged and they know that I'm reading and yes. they know that, you know, cause they'll write paragraphs and stuff. And I, I want to respond to all of them, but there's so many. So I just yeah. try to them or I'll reply to as many as I can. I have a discord chat. Um, nice. I do like giveaways and mm -hmm. things like that just to connect with them more. I think it's yeah. so important. Yeah, you know, one of the things as a creator, and I think this is also where you were discussing, like, having to stay busy, like the hustle, right? Because if not, who else is going to do it? So my next question right. would be, what other strategies do you utilize to keep people interested in your content and wanting to come back? Because we know, yeah. like, the attention span of people are like this. Like seconds, yeah. you got seconds to get them captivated or they're on to the next. So what do you do? What, what are some things you can give us? Words of advice? 
Yeah. So every time I'm editing or I'm doing a video, I know that the human attention span is seven seconds. Mm. So every so-and-so seconds, I'll add something or a transition or a different clip or a different mm. thing like in, in seven seconds, usually if there's nothing like interesting happening, you know, yeah. um, because it just, it increases your watch time on YouTube for sure. If you do That's that. Cool. Um, and then for TikTok, it's so short, you know, but you want people to stay around. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to, I don't know, like you can tell stories or anything like that, or start out with, um, oh, I talk to dead people and then, mm. and then start your story. I mean, yes. you don't see that, but like yeah. whatever, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> whatever's interesting, you know, that is going to yeah. hook people, but it's part of the content, you know, mm. so you want to just hook them in the first two seconds, basically. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that's, that is so true. Like, what do you have that stands out like this? Right. Yeah. That when I scroll, yeah. I automatically want to be involved. Yeah. Right. That, that is so true. And a lot of times I, I was just having this conversation on a Zoom meeting about content creation. And that was one of the things that they said. A lot of times we want to get to the punchlines really late. And after yeah. five seconds, I'm bored. I got to move. <laughs> I got to Right, move. right. And Everyone's like, busy. Everyone's yes, scrolling, you know? That's, yeah, that's, for sure. So you were, not too long ago, you were selected as a feature creator and mm -hmm. panelist at VidCon and Playlist Live. So for, first of all, big. That's huge. Congratulations on Thank that. You. That was big. So talk to us about your experience over the events and how much did it mean to you being a content creator? It was so surreal, honestly. Like I went to Playlist uh, last year and it was just so cool to be able to meet people and to be recognized for things that I do and my hard work that I'm putting yeah. out and just knowing that it's coming full circle and it mm -hmm. is helping people. I think it's really important to just stay authentic to yourself. And um, if you can help people in any way, you yeah. know, with your story or your content or anything like that, I think it's so, so important. Um, and VidCon was just, it was crazy. Like I, I think my YouTube kind of took off more this mm -hmm. year. And so it was like every second, it was so cool just to be meeting so many people. And when they would hold Lola, like the, the look on their face is so, I mean, it's just so cool. You know, <laughs> like they were just like, I get to hold her. Yes, they get yes, so excited. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. It was oh. just so cool and so surreal. And I'm just so beyond grateful. Man, that's amazing. And as well, you are also a phenomenal singer. I know you recently came out with September 10th. Yes. And that's a personal song that, you know, uh, from what I'm understanding, um, focuses on finding strength. Yes. Uh, so talk about the inspiration behind that song and what it means to you and what you want your fans to take away listening to it. Yeah. So I like to share my personal experiences just to help other people. You know, I'm just really called to doing that. And I had a really traumatic experience with an old friend on my birthday, um, which is September 10th. Yeah. So I, you know, I kind of wanted to take that experience that really broke me. I mean, it, it just shattered me and it yeah. was my core, you know, it was something, it was harder than any breakup I've ever been through. It was, it was really hard for me. Yeah. And I wanted to turn something so dark and traumatic into something light. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that through art and I got with Kamana Vago, Jesse Page, they helped. Um, I mean, Kamana Vago produced the song and did so many things. Jesse Page also helped. I'm so new to music that I'm still learning, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm like, I can't take credit for the production <laughs> process. Cause yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing yet, but, <laughs> but it was just such a great process to have like so many people supporting me and supporting my journey and to read the comments under like the music video which is directed by Kira Gardner mm -hmm. it is just like everyone took it in a, their own way and that's yeah. exactly what I wanted it wasn't to send hate to you know my ex-friend or whatever it was literally to share my journey and to share mm -hmm. my process and the healing part of it and to share with people that you can heal from this yes you know, yes from anything you can mm -hmm. heal from anything and it's the strengths within you and it's all up to you to find your power yes and it's such an amazing message right that most of us need to hear like there the strength is within you and i think a yes, lot of yeah. times we we seek for validation 
her strength in places that we shouldn't. And then we end up in a deeper hole trying to find something that's already within ourselves. Right, right. You it's know? right here. It's yeah. all right here. And you're yeah. like, you just got to find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to kind of expound on this just a little bit. I know for myself when I was younger, tapping into my gift was so difficult and not because I couldn't do it, but yeah. because of what I thought other people would say about right. the gift. And I think a lot of us as creators, we go through that period where we're like, I love this, but will people love what I love? So my question to you would be, what would you say to younger creators right now who are in that bubble where they love to create, they want to do this thing, they know what their gifts is, but they are afraid? Right. I say take a leap of faith and just stay to your authentic self because if you do that the power that's again with the power within you you yeah. can do anything you set your mind to truly like i was the shy girl in high school who didn't yeah. sit in the hallway by myself and like i i was just so shy to talk to people and stuff and i was so insecure with myself and mm -hmm. once i found that it's like a whole new person you know mm. it's all it's all about finding yourself and finding what you like to do, even if yes. it's different from what other people do. Who mm -hmm. who cares if it's different? It's great right. that it's different. Be different. You know, that's right. the most important part because I feel like as we're growing up, we're taught, oh, you need to fit in. You need to do this. You need to do that. But you don't. Like, right. don't don't try to fit in, you know, mm -hmm. be you because then that's going to that's going to spread to other people and it's just going to add light to this dark world. Yes, and it's so true, right? And uh, to, just to add to that, because it's sitting on my heart, the gift belongs to you. So whatever yes. it is, it's yours to give to whoever you choose to. Like, it's yes. not anybody, anything that you can just give out and people are just going to whatever. It's yours to select who you right. allow into your space. You know what right. I mean? And I love that we get these gifts and they belong to us and no one can take them from us. You know what I mean? Right. Um, what do you have coming up? that we can support and be a part of. Yeah, so I just released um the Lola plushie toys. There's one laying up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just, like, fell over <laughs> earlier. Um, but there's Lola plushie toys that we just came out. They're for pre-order right now. I'm working on a tarot card deck. I'm hand designing every single card. It's been a it's been a while, and I'm working on some new music too. Let's go. So how can people <laughs> find you and and just be involved in everything Kelsey B? Yeah, it's just Kelsey Davies on YouTube, K-E-L-S-I-D-A-V-I-E-S. -E -E and then it's Kelsey Davies with two I's and two S's on pretty much every other platform. Okay. Kelsey Davies, everybody, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you. Please make sure you go and you follow. Why? Because I said so. And I thank you all <laughs> for tuning in to another episode of One on One with Courtney Starks. Have a good one.